Thank you all for coming. We're, we're thrilled to be launching CLIP today. I think the, 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 the gentleman uh, needs no introduction. Uh, Bjorn from uh, ABBA and co-founder of uh, the Music Rights Awareness Foundation along with Nicholas Molander. Where's Nick? I'm here. Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas is here. And of course, the Director General. Uh, we have some people joining us online as well, but beforehand, perhaps give the floor to... Um, yeah, I don't know whether we've got... I've, Just I've a not any prepared remarks. No, for yeah. if you can yeah. say a few words about the I importance of this words. initiative, go ahead and, and Bjorn. Well, thank you so much for coming to the press conference for the launch of CLIP. Uh, CLIP stands for Creators Learn Intellectual Property. And as someone who used to play music semi-professionally, but gave that up for a career in law and IP, uh, music has never left my heart. And so when the team came together, and of course working with Music Rights Awareness Foundation, Bjorn and others, to talk about how can, what can we do to help musicians to use IP and to understand that IP is part of their journey to make a livelihood as a musician, uh, I was super excited. Uh, that was some years back, and of course, like making a song, uh, the journey from the ideation to the actual release of the song and the journey from clip from uh, a concept on the paper to what it's launched today, right? Uh, took some time uh, with many partners, uh, but very pleased that today we're able to launch it, show you what it's capable of, and I, of course I'm absolutely thrilled and honoured to have uh, with me uh, the legendary Bjorn Alves, uh, uh, music superstar. But many of you uh, know him from the music. Uh, you fell in love to his music. You fell out of love to his music. But many of you may not know that Bjorn also is a very, very passionate about mentoring the next generation of musicians and of helping musicians anywhere in the world uh, to earn a living through music. So without further ado, I'll just maybe pass the floor and the mic to Bjorn and to say that we look forward to your questions and to uh, helping you uh, understand more about CLIP. Thank you. Bjorn, please. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm here because I've learned that um, in this music industry of ours, it all begins with a song. And um, people in general focus on the artist, the singer, the band, and, and they forget that without the songs, the band or the singer w won't be there. And uh, this is how it's always been. And I'm a songwriter at heart, and I've always thought that the songwriter, the creator of the songs that they sing, has been relegated to the periphery, more or less, when he or she should be right at the center. And uh, today it's more difficult to be a songwriter than ever because of competition because of the complexity of the music industry itself. And this is why this initiative is, is so important. Because in order to make it today, um, it's much harder than it used to be when I, you know, when I was um, active with ABBA during the 70s. Uh, today, you have to be an entrepreneur as well as a, a writer and a musician. You, you have to make your own PR, you have to do it all, and which makes it more important than ever that you know your industry. That is, that you know how to maneuver in the music industry. And uh, that's why it's vital with education. And a tool like this is sorely needed. A tool, a platform you can go to whenever you have any kind of question about the, the, the music industry. It's all in here, and it's being updated as, as, as we speak. And uh, because the music industry is getting more complex every day with AI uh, entering the scene as well. So that's why I'm passionate about this project and, and why I'm here today. I mean, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the fact that some of the songs that I've co-written have survived. Um, so thank you for having me. And it's, uh, uh, it's great to be able to launch this project. Absolutely. 
Thank you so much. Take some questions. Please go ahead. lacking that you feel clip can can fill in thank you yeah first of all they need to know uh, they need to know what their rights are uh, that's the first thing and then when they upload whatever they upload um, they need to know that there are certain identifiers that are very vital because without them they won't get paid and they need to know what those identifiers are and how they can enter them into the system. Otherwise they won't get paid, and if they don't get paid, they can't have a career. I know that myself. Um, songwriting is something that takes a lot of work, not only talent, but a lot of work and time. And unless you can afford that time, um, you, you can't become really a good craftsman, even if you're talented. Uh, so you need to get paid, and to get paid you need to know what your rights are and um, how to interact with the music industry that way, with intellectual property. Thank you. Just to supplement, uh, I think uh, technology is uh, really a great opportunity, but also a, good, a great challenge for many musicians. Uh, it's an opportunity because through technology, a musician from anywhere in the world can bring his or her music to any other part of the world. But it's a challenge because if they don't, as Beyond says, understand their rights, understand that they can make some simple practices to put identifiers in their music, they will not get the revenue they need to sustain themselves. Musicians need to put bread on the table. Musicians need to sustain their families. Musicians need to have a chance to earn a decent living. Uh, so, so what we're trying to do with this clip is to help them, you know, help them have the right tools, the right knowledge, the right practices, and through senior professional and senior, you know, senior very successful musicians like Bjorn and many others, uh, to be mentored and educated, you know, and have their knowledge be transferred to this new generation that, that needs you know, also to, 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 to be able to sustain their career and their passion in music. Thank you. We'll take a question online. Uh, Antonio from, um, from uh, the Spanish News Agency. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's muted. Well, he's, yeah, he's muted. So yeah, you have to unmute. You have to unmute yourself, uh, Antonio. Okay, I think I am on mute now. We can hear you. Um, so my question, I think, is for Bjorn. Uh, given your experience, uh, do you think that the worst of the uh, of the music piracy is over? Uh, I heard that uh, many people say that it was uh, much easier to to copy a, a song illegally before with the p2p networks and now the things are a bit better but what's your impression now i'm not entirely sure what your question is about is it harder to copy now than it used to be could you rephrase that perhaps yes something like that or in general uh, about the Piracy in music, what is the situation now? It is worse than before, it's uh, better. Mm, what are, what are, is your impression as a, as a songwriter? If you could comment on the situation of music piracy today. Oh, music piracy, I see, okay. <laughs> uh, illegal downloading is going on as, as, you know, as, it, as it used to, uh, only it's so easy to subscribe to a, um, streaming service these days. So uh, a lot of people, you know, they find it easier to do the right thing instead of doing piracy, instead of illegal downloading. I, I think that's why, um, hadn't it been for the ease of, down, of, of streaming, I think the illegal downloading would be worse today than it was before. But thank God it's not. Please, Geneva Solutions. 
Um, Kesmira Jefford from Geneva Solutions. I've got a couple of questions. Um, on AI, I was wondering how you plan with the platform to kind of tackle some of the still many unknowns there. What do you think that uh, artists need to be aware of now in terms of using it to their advantage or protecting themselves? I know that's quite a big topic. And then uh, for Darren Tang, how does um, this uh, project initiative fit into your wider strategy at WIPO and, and other conversations that are taking place at WIPO in terms of um, how digital transformations are impacting IP. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm right in the middle of it now. Uh, I'm in the middle of, of Google, DeepMind and, and uh, Universal. Um, uh, Google has an AI um, model which hasn't been launched yet it's called the incubator and there is a group of artists and songwriters in the world that they consult um, uh, about how remuneration will happen because it's very very complicated the input and the output uh, we are in uncharted territory um, there are different views yeah. about the output, the output being um, whatever the user of an AI model uploads to a streaming service uh, after having prompted the AI model with text what they want, what they want the AI model to generate, be it I want a love ballad in the style of ABBA, sung by Frank Sinatra, but with a symphony orchestra. That's a prompt. And the prompt can be very complicated and, ve and can be very, very long, which means that in the end, it's going to be impossible to trace where, that, um, where the influence came from. Because the AI model first would have trained on a music, a lot of music, a lot of, of music catalogs. That's the input. Um, and that's where the remuneration has to happen, I think, because the output, the copyright question is so up in the air. But when it comes to letting your song catalog, like for instance, the ABBA catalog, letting an AI model train on that, that's where the remuneration has to happen. But all this is being discussed in the music industry as we speak, and there's no solution. And I think that the regulator, the, the law maker, is behind. And um, as usual, I, I, I almost said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the music industry itself has to lead the way. And this will happen, you know, in, within the, the next few months, I think. There, there has to be some kind of solution of how you remunerate those whose catalogs the AI models train on. I will answer your second question, which is why is WIPO doing this and this? how is this part of our larger vision? I think, you know, Intellectual property is, is so mysterious, so technical, and so difficult to understand for, for normal people. As one of the ambassadors told me when I first took the, on this job, the problem with intellectual property is that it's too intellectual. And, and, and I, I, I came on board and I took on this role as the director general with the mandate to transform that. Because I believe that intellectual property is not just for IP specialists and experts but it has to be brought down to the grassroots level and support those who are innovating and creating. So a lot of the work at WIPO now is not just focusing on the technical aspects of IP. We're focusing on, focusing on IP as a catalyst to help people to bring their music to the market, bring their ideas and make it reality. IP as a way to create jobs to, to support business owners. IP as a way of supporting designers on the ground, creators, you know, artists, musicians. Uh, those whose ideas help to change the world. So this project is very aligned with a lot of other things we're doing uh, at WIPO. 
because when we look at IP in, in, in a slightly more holistic fashion, we see that so much connected to innovation, to creativity, to digitalization, to entrepreneurship, to technology. And so a lot of the work that we do now is how can we transform the IP system so that it supports people uh, who are there on the grassroots. And not just those in developed countries, but especially those in developing countries and least developed countries who especially need to feel that and need to see that the IP system is in supporting them as well. So I welcome those of you who, who, are, who are new to this way of looking at IP to connect with Sama and to come and talk to us. After this, today we're focusing on CLIP, but we have many, many other exciting projects we're doing, many exciting initiatives we're doing that are off the beaten track for, for, for IP, uh, off the beaten track for, 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 for IPO, IPO in the past, but we think it's so exciting and so interesting and so impactful, right, uh, for, for people uh, around the world who are innovators and creators. And CLIP is just one example of that. Blick, you know. Yes, I have a question, a follow-up question for Bjorn Ulvaeus. You just described your, your encounter with the Google incubator, and you described how you heard an uh, ABBA-inspired song made by um, AI. What was your first instant reaction uh, to, to it? And maybe a follow-up question. You described delusion also as a, as a future problem for, for music creation, creators, so that too much artificial created songs flow into, uh, in, into the public and, and cover human uh, created um, music. How can you tackle that? Well, I, when I, I was presented to the uh, incubator in the Lions Den in Google DeepMind's office in, in London and I was blown away. Um, by, by what it could do, but, but more about what it will be able to do in the future. Um, endless possibilities and a wonderful creative tool for songwriters and, and artists. Um, uh, th that was my, you know, that's the positive side of it. The negative side, of course, is that we risk that um, the streaming services will be swamped with purely AI-generated music. And we have to separate between what is human and what is um, AI. Uh, because otherwise, the music industry will be destroyed, I think. And I think we have to face it. A human uh, creator will have to identify him or herself. Much like we do when we access our bank accounts. There's something, there's an app in Sweden called Bank ID. I don't know whether there's a, an equivalent here, of course, in Switzerland, <laughs> of all countries. But, but I think that is the only solution, because other, otherwise there will be billions of tracks uploaded that never has been touched, have been touched by a human hand. And we can't have that. We must look out for the human creators. And the only way is for them to identify themselves and maybe to put a limit to how many tracks they can upload per month, for instance, to stop fraud. Um, that, that is the solution that I see. And of course, they have to identify themselves at the same time um, with identifiers, musical identifiers. Okay, we have a few requests for some one-on-ones. Uh, so perhaps we can uh, stop the press conference now.